Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I recently got into the power scaling community like two months ago. And when I was watching Death Battle's video on Sanji vs. Rock Lee, I noticed some inconsistencies and some things that were outright wrong. Now, let's get into this. By the way, keep in mind this video was made in November of 2020. So the exoskeleton and Germa abilities for Sanji are out of the question, and most feats outside of the Momoshiki arc and are out of the question for Rock Lee. So the video starts with Sanji. Death Battle goes into some lore and stuff that we don't care about for this video. He goes over most of the abilities of Sanji, but when he gets a Diable Jambe, he claims for that to work, Sanji has to move at 11,000 meters per second. ...to recognize is Diable Jam, also known as the Devil Leg. By moving at incredibly high speeds, Sanji builds up friction between the air and his leg until it literally catches on fire. To do so, he'd have to be moving his legs over 11,000 meters per second. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for them, according to NASA, the speed a human needs to move to catch on fire is 6,000 kilometers per hour. Now, using our good old friend, the Google Converter, we could translate 6,000 kilometers per hour to 1,666.67 meters per second. Now, unfortunately for them, that doesn't even come close to the 11,000 meters per second mentioned. He then goes on to say that Sanji's speed is relative to Luffy's. He's quick enough to keep up with the pirate captain, Luffy! We're even going to use your own manga panel to disprove you. Sanji is clearly getting slapped by both Luffy and Jinbei in this panel. You can't use this as evidence to back up that Sanji can keep up with Luffy. And the problem is there is no place in the manga to support this. The only time Luffy and Sanji ever fought was when Luffy willingly took a beating from Sanji. But other than that, you have to do some crazy scaling to prove that they're relative in speed. They also said that post time skip Sanji is relative to post time skip Zoro using a pre time skip fight. He's strong enough to keep up with the likes of Zoro, one of the deadliest swordsmen in the freaking world! Making a claim like this, one would need to use a post time skip fight for proof or a post time skip statement. The problem with this is it moves Sanji a whole AP tier level up. And then they proceed to use this point to claim that Zoro is island level because he blew up a meteor. And he could battle the marine Fujitora, who could summon meteors from the sky, the largest of which, when compared to the island of Dressrosa, appears to have a diameter of over 780 meters, and thus a kinetic energy of over 12 gigatons of TNT. So, like, he fought a guy who could basically blow up a whole island in a snap, and then some. Hold up, run that clip back. <laughs> As you can see, I even zoomed in for you. Mihawk was the one who blew up the meteor. Now you might ask, where was the rest of them? Mihawk blew them up too. Now another problem with this whole meteor scaling in the hole is that you're giving Zoro the benefit of the doubt that he cut the biggest meteor, even though it was clearly the first one. Cutting a meteor in general is a impressive feat, but you're making it more impressive than it actually is by using the biggest meteor there. Keep in mind that with all these claims, they are saying that Sanji and Zoro are relative. Better way to scale Sanji to island level 
is to say he was fighting and beating Charlotte Oven. Now you may be asking, why is beating Charlotte Oven important? Isn't he like one of the lackeys in the Big Mom crew? Well, Charlotte Oven, casually by the way, boiled the sea. I think it's about time we move on to Lee now. There's a little bit less to say here, so let's just get started. They do that lore thing that they always do at the beginning of a character introduction. And then they do a bunch of power scaling that doesn't look wrong to me. Probably because Naruto scaling is more straightforward. But then they go ahead and say that Lee is relative to Guy. Frankly, as the successor to Might Guy, who did unlock all eight gates, Lee should be comparable. They don't provide any proof for this, even though it is believable. Something you could use here as evidence is when they were both fighting Naruto in the Four Cloak, who went Rampage, and they were keeping up with each other quite well. So I would have recommended using that. Although I do have a couple problems with this. For one, they use their relative claim to say that Lee can open the 7th and 8th gate. He has never, not even once, opened those two gates and even said in the war arc that he can't open the 7th and 8th. But let's say, let's give him the benefit of the doubt that he can. That means he could match my guy's country level feat of kicking Madara, one Renegon, ten tails Jinshuriki in half. We can prove that Madara has country level durability, at least in this stage, using Naruto. Naruto, in his 6 path sage mode, no KCM2, through a lava release, Ra Sun Shuriken at Madara, and Madara tanked it without getting sustainable damage. And using the good old versus wiki, we can figure out the requirements for country level, which is 7 to 100 teratons of force. But then they go on to say that Madara was packing more power than when Naruto accidentally blew a hole in the moon. With the 8th, he could go head-to-head -head with the ultimate big bad, Madara. This creep was packing more power than when Naruto's chakra blew a hole through the moon. A 400 petaton explosion! That's way bigger than 50 nukes! That's true, but you're referring to a different form of Madara? The Madara that Guy scales to is one Renegon, no other eye, ten tail Madara. The Madara that packs more punch than Naruto at this point would be Rene Sharingan, both Renegon, God Tree Absorb, ten tails Madara. One eyed Madara is way weaker than three eyed Madara. If you want proof that one-eyed Madara is weaker than three-eyed Madara, I got you. Naruto, in base 6 passage mode, was slapping around one-eyed Madara like it was no problem. Madara was even worrying. He even went on panel and was thinking like, oh shoot, this is bad. Yet it took both Renegon Sasuke and six paths KCM2 Naruto to be three-eyed Madara. So you can't scale them to equivalent and then say that my guy is multi-continental. To put into perspective what multi-continental in the Naruto universe looks like, it's six paths level. You're looking at your Kaguyas, your six path Naruto's, those people. My guy does not equate. And even if all the stuff that Death Battle claimed was true, you would have to prove that Rock Lee and my guy are relative. All of the stuff I mentioned was assuming they were relative. It's a debate, but there are two fights in Boruto that happen in the exact same arc that disprove that my guy and Rock Lee are relative. Specifically, Metal and Iwabe versus my guy, and Metal versus Rock Lee. What happened in these fights was that my guy one tapped Metal, and that Metal was going blow for blow with Rock Lee. That doesn't look good. For the conclusion, let me just play this. Well, the seventh gate meant Lee could probably blow up an island. That's not as big as the meteors the Straw Hats could handle. <coughs> um, well, Six Gate did this. 
And also, here's a clip of your own video saying that a meteor is smaller than an island. Other than that, the conclusion only had points that I already debunked. So I will see you guys later. Like, subscribe, share the video, or whatever you do. I'm out. Peace.